Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Stefan Rego, and today I will present to you Clesperanto, at least part of the project. So for those who don't know what it is, Clesperanto is a GPU accelerated image processing library in a very general way. And here today I will present to you uh, a new architecture in order to unify its uh, implementation to make it easier for everyone to use. Uh, on all the different platform and easier for us uh, to uh, maintain. Uh, this work is done also in collaboration with Robert Hase and uh, is an ongoing work. So what I'm presenting to you is something that we are currently developing and continue developing. Um, so in terms of bioimage analysis, uh, we all use pipelines. That's how people do and create by image analysis. Uh, uh, quantification and if we go for the lowest possible image analysis pipeline we can think of personally i would go for gaussian blur to the noise and tomatic thresholding and uh, uh, connected component labeling to identify the object to then extract quantification the classic denoise segment and quantify and to do so we are relying ourselves on some uh, bioimage uh, processing or uh, libraries and uh, frame, uh, framework like software like CG or, uh, or the uh, Imaris for the other part. And when we try to do the same exactly small uh, pipeline that I just show you, you will see that for the three examples I took, uh, Fiji Macro, MATLAB, and Scikit Image with Python, for example, uh, you will have to call either different name of uh, functions to do is the exact same thing and you will have the use of those functions in a very different uh, way in terms of parameter. Some will take three parameters for the sigma for the Gaussian blur, some other will only take one and will be an isotropic, uh, an, uh, iso uh, an isotropic uh, blur. Some other in terms of labeling they will call it analyzed particle for Fiji or uh, labeling for Python. At the end you will get your results and if you look a bit closely, well, the results, even if they look exactly the same, you will see that they have actual differences between the different framework or software you used. In this case, for the very simplistic pipeline I've used, we have only a few pixels of differences. But you can see very quickly how these kind of errors or differences can scale up in terms of more complex approach. Uh, for example, uh, Delaunay or Voronoi tessellation, this can change slightly uh, the results uh, diagram in terms of mathematic computation. So if ideally we want, in a word, a very good image processing library with 2D and 3D processing, and if it's accelerated by GPU or if it's very fast with large data set, it's great. And what we propose here is to have this with all the including part of an easy access and installation, open source, and try to have something that is, they have the same name in terms of function and usage, whatever the framework or the language you're using, and have the same results in terms of uh, computation uh, consistency. And while having that, we want to have the same library easily maintainable and scalable for uh, any new requests or for the community which requires some uh, specific uh, processing. So we come up with the Clasperanto project, which is a GPU accelerated image analysis uh, library. And in this case, this particular part of, the, of this library is that it's a uniform library, no matter the framework or the language you are using. We are trying to have the same naming, the same uh, function, and especially the same results. And in this case, the code that you can see here are actually running both on Python or on uh, the uh, Fiji uh, macro part with uh, Jiton. And we actually presented this work already in the I2K uh, 2020 as a workshop with Robert, where we showed some example with Fiji MATLAB, IC, and some Jupyter Notebook implementation and Napa Rebels. And you can check this on YouTube. The link is still there. It's uh, very interesting. But you have to understand that both what we showed here are running on different code below in terms of GPU 
and hence are not exactly completely compatible and uh, interoperable. So if we look a bit more into the architecture, this is how it looks like. You can see that both the Python part and the Java part are completely separated. And the computation layer where every, all the efforts, all the algorithm are coded are on the top of those architecture. Where the bottom layer in charge of communicating with the GPU is at, uh, at the top and the, at the bottom, the communication with the GPU is at the bottom. And when with this aspect, we still have this easy access, open source and consistency in terms of results and naming, but we don't have this uh, um, interoperability in terms of framework. We require duplicate implementation between the two, the, the multiple framework that is between the languages. And in terms of maintenance and update, this is actually uh, a double work or triple, depending on how many language we want to cover. So how to change this? Well, we come up then, we, we, we are trying to change the, the architecture into something a bit more horizontal. And we've created a new backend click in C++ because someone previously said that this is very strong and stable and uh, long in longevity. And uh, on top of it, we build transition layers or wrapper in, uh, in to allow the access of the backend to the different framework and language we are trying to target. And today we are proud to say that we've managed to do the first transition layer toward Python. And the first one with C++, which is easier because the, the backend is in C++ and is currently trying to be integrated in the ITK. For the Java part is planned and is going to come. A same also, the Python is still ongoing. So we are going to be soon integrating it with the Napari uh, structure. And what, in terms of how to use it, it doesn't change since KG, so KG, which is the, the ancestor of Crespanto, you, whatever you use C++ or Python, you can still, you will still have to link the library to uh, your script or your program. You will have to push the data first from your computer toward the GPU. Then you can apply different filters as a pipeline. And once the pipeline in GPU is finished and you want to get the results, you can pull back the result from the GPU back to your CPU, to your computer, and you can read it as a normal uh, image uh, data set. And you will see here that except with the language style and convention that we haven't changed, the naming, the number of parameters are exactly the same. And behind those line of code is the exact same code that is run, whatever you're using C++ or Python. In terms of GPU acceleration, we maintain a, a good speed acceleration, which when we compare it to all previous implementation that we presented in the I2K uh, 2020, we are losing a little bit of time, but that's because we, we changed the backend and we are using a less uh, specified uh, uh, layer and that we have rebuilt this backend from scratch. So we need time still to optimize, but still on a very long and large uh, data set like the tree volume that Robert is usually presenting a lot, we can see that we are, there is the time difference is very slow and we, it's small and we can keep still a, a good performance issue in terms of big data analysis. And this is where basically we need you. Those two, uh, uh, C++ and at least Python part are in uh, beta testing or pre-alpha. And it would be great if some of you, at least the courageous part of, uh, of you, uh, go have a try uh, and, and break it completely because I'm pretty sure there are still some bug and help us improve it in terms of stability, uh, in terms of what you guys need in terms of uh, uh, operation and, and filters uh, for, your, for you to do the, the analysis. With that, I would like to thank my team at Aster that are supporting me in this effort and uh, other people who help us uh, shape uh, this Pronto project into a great uh, open access GPU uh, library. Also, uh, very quickly, I would like to advertise uh, the few coming workshop and symposia that we are organizing with the help of the Trans Zuckerberg Initiative that are going to come uh, end of 2022 in London at the Crick Institute and next year, Spring and Autumn in Paris and Dresden at Faster and physical life. Uh, oh, thank you very much. And if you have any question, I will be happy to answer.